Hey Chief, it's been just over a month since we released the massive Clan Capital update. And we hope you've been enjoying this brand new facet to Clash of Clans. Although Clan Capitals adds a whole new dimension to how you clash, we've got an update coming with some much needed quality of life improvements, game fixes, and balance changes. In this update, we've taken our community's input and we're implementing some changes based on that feedback. We've got quite a few quality of life improvements. Without further ado, let's dive right in. The goal of Clan Capital is to unite and engage the entire clan where you help create a thriving, growing city where every member can contribute to its development. We've got a few capital related quality of life improvements going in the June update. So to start, Builder Potions will now work on the forge, allowing you to speed up the rate at which you can manufacture capital gold. And who doesn't want more of these really cool golden purple coins? We've also added a profile button that will allow you to view your enemy clan during a capital raid. Additionally, you can now create district-friendly challenges during a raid weekend for layouts that have not been changed during that weekend. One thing that we've noticed is that not everybody realizes when an army camp in your clan capital has finished upgrading. When you do an attack during a capital raid weekend, if you have not used the full housing space limit for your army, it will let you know that you cannot initiate that attack. When you visit the trader, if an item is out of stock, usually it just shows up as grayed out. Now, after the update, sold out items will be much more clearly labeled instead of just having a grayed out icon. Trying to determine how many capital raid attacks you have left requires you to visit the clan capital. But after the update, the number of attacks you have left will be displayed over the airship. That way you don't need to actually visit the clan capital to see how many attacks you have left. So let's touch on raid medals. Raid medals in the current system are rewarded equally amongst everybody in the clan. After the update, raid medals will be distributed based on the number of attacks instead of distributing them equally, even if you haven't used all of your attacks. But what about the home village? I'm sure you're asking. Don't worry, we've got you covered. To start, we've got Zero Troop Training Cops. I really hope the editing staff added just adequate amount of reverb to highlight how big this is. We are removing all training costs for troops, spells, and seed machines. Yes, you heard that right. All training costs are now removed. That means you don't need to spend any elixir or dark elixir to train your army. Well, worry no longer. All costs are now removed. We want you to be able to train any army without having to worry about being able to afford it. Training time and housing space limitations are still present in the game. Now that you've got more resources at your disposal, what can you do with it? We've got a few changes going into effect. In this update, players will be able to begin upgrading their walls with Elixir starting at Town Hall 5. Additionally, clan castles will now be upgraded with Elixir instead of gold. These changes are to help balance the increased amount of Elixir players will now have access to with the removal of training costs and to ensure there is an adequate Elixir sink still available in the game. Another quality of life improvement that has been requested over the years is a remove all button when training your army. If you have a bunch of troops already in the training queue, having to manually remove each troop one at a time is so time consuming and tedious. If you want to remove the entire training queue in one tap, there's a button for it. It will wipe the queue clean, allowing you to create a new roster from scratch. And speaking of armies, we've got a quality of life change we think will go over very well with everyone quick donation of any super troop. That's right. You can now donate any super troop with gems, even if you don't have that super troop activated. The only requirement is that you must have access to that super troop yourself. For example, if you don't have access to super dragons, you will not be able to quick donate super dragons for gems. You can only donate the super troops you can activate. And yes, 
one gem troop donations will work with this and you'll still receive any season pass or clan perks associated with troop donating. Pretty cool, right? Another quality of life change going with this game is purely aesthetic, a scenery randomizer. Just like the skin randomizer, the scenery randomizer will randomly select any scenery you've acquired and will apply that scenery every time your base is loaded. And just like the skin randomizer, you'll see a list of your available sceneries. Just tap the ones you want in the randomizer rotation. Anytime your base is loaded, a random scenery from that selection will be applied, making your village feel fresh and visually distinct each time you visit your village. All right, Chief, we need to have a talk. We've got one last quality of life change that has been a long time coming and one that has been hotly discussed in the community for a while. We are talking about national flags. So in this update, we will be removing all national flags from the game. When Clash was first launched 10 years ago, we never expected the game to become the wildly successful phenomenon that it is today. And although there are relatable references in Clash of Clans to the real world, the Clash universe is its own fantasy setting with its own cast of zany characters from wizards who summon bunnies to hammer wielding mohawk sporting hog riders to magical spells that summon a gaggle of murderous bats or skeletons. When this update is released, any national flags that you may have purchased from the store will be refunded. We want to make sure the Clash universe remains separate from the real world and thus removing all the flags from the game. Any fictional flags that are not associated with any nationality, those will still remain in the game. And one last thing we wanna to touch on is that we've got some balance changes going into this update as well. We've reduced the hit points of walls ranging from Town Hall 9 to Town Hall 13 to make ground attacks much more viable. For full list of balance changes, please make sure you check out your favorite Clash content creator for the latest news regarding what's changing, how it affects the meta, and what you can expect to happen to your favorite strategy. And don't forget to check out the full patch notes when they're available. You'll be able to find them linked to our official social media channels, and we'll also add them to the description below. Please keep your feedback coming. Leave your comments below. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Your input has helped make so many changes to Clash of Clans, and that passion and excitement over the last 10 years tells us that there are still many more great years ahead of us for this incredible game. We can't thank you enough for being such an amazing community, and we can't wait to show you what the future holds for Clash of Clans. Until next time, Clash on. We've really appreciated that. So I'll push off camera. Yes. So you. Don't worry. We've got you covered. <laughs>